Hello and welcome to another GCSE revision video. In this video we're going to be looking at the three-dimensional shape, the sphere. It's basically just a three-dimensional circle. Every point on the outside of the sphere is exactly the same distance from the very center of the sphere. The distance from the center of the sphere to the surface is called the radius. The diameter of a sphere is the same as the width of the sphere, which is twice its radius. And when I say width, I mean the maximum possible width of the sphere. The surface area of a sphere can be calculated using the formula 4 pi r squared. And the volume of a sphere can be calculated using the formula 4 pi r cubed over 3. OK then, so much for the theory. Let's have a go at putting this into practice. A sphere has a maximum width of 10 centimetres. What is the surface area and volume of the sphere? OK, good luck with that one. Pause the video, take your time, and when you're ready, just press play. OK, so how did you get on with that question? Right, we're told a sphere has a maximum width of 10 centimetres. What is the surface area and volume of the sphere? OK, well if its maximum width is 10 centimetres, then that means its diameter is 10 centimetres, which means its ra radius is one half of 10 centimetres, so its radius is 5 centimetres. So radius equals 10 centimetres over 2 equals 5 centimetres. OK, it's surface area and is equal to 4 pi r squared which is equal to 4 times pi times, well 5 squared we know is 25 from our times tables, 5 times 5 is 25 and that's centimetres squared. Well, 4 times 25 is 100, because 25% is a quarter. So that's equal to 100 pi. And if you used a calculator, you should get something like 314 centimetres squared. If you'd have said 314.1, that would have been fine too. Or even 314.2. OK, now for the volume is equal to 4 times pi times r cubed over 3. Well, we can say 4 pi r squared we already know is 314 centimetres. So it's actually 314 centimetres squared but it's 4 pi r cubed, not 4 pi r squared, so we've got to times by the radius again, so that's times 5 centimetres. And then we've got to divide all that lot by 3. In fact, I'm going to save time, I'm just going to use the calculator. OK, so I've got my calculator, so I'm just going to plug this in. So that's 4 times pi times 5 cubed divided by 3. And that's equal to 523.6. I'm going to round that up to 524. But if you said 523.6, that's fine. 524 centimetres cubed. If you gave the exact answer of that would be 500 pi over 3 
that's because the surface area is 100 pi. So if you said that's, well, multiply by 5 is 500 pi and then divide by 3 is 500 pi over 3. If that's what you said, then that also would have been fine. And if you'd have done 500 over 3 and said, well, that's 166.666 recurring or 166 and 2 thirds pi, that would also have been perfectly fine. A golf ball has a width of 41.1 millimetres. A basketball has a width of 24.26 centimetres. Which has the largest surface area to volume ratio? Assume both balls are spheres. Now the surface area to volume ratio is the amount of surface area per unit volume. OK, take your time with that. Good luck. Uh, pause the video and I'll be ready with the answer in, well, as soon as you press play. OK, so how did you get on with that question? All right, well, there's two ways to attack this problem. One is to work very specifically with our 41.1 millimetres and our 24.26 centimetres and to calculate the surface area and then calculate the volume for both so you've got the surface area to volume ratio of both and then you compare the surface area to volume ratio of both by converting them both into unitary form a lot of hard work uh, a, a better approach is to try to be as general as possible until the very end so the surface area to volume ratio for any sphere at all the surface area for all spheres is 4 pi r squared and the volume is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So the surface area to volume ratio for all spheres is 4 pi r squared to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. And now we can start simplifying well, the 4 pi r squared will disappear from both sides. So that becomes a 1. And the 4 goes, the pi goes, and the r squared goes, leaving just r. So we're left with a ratio of 1 to r over 3. Of course, with surface area to volume ratio to be comparable, we really want the volume to be the 1, not the surface area to be the 1. So if we multiply everything by 3, that gives us a ratio of 3 to r. And if we divide everything by r, we get 3 over r to 1. And that's basically all there is to it. We can see that as r gets bigger, so the surface area to volume ratio gets smaller because this is a fraction with r on the denominator so the bigger the denominator of a fraction the smaller the overall quotient is so just from this we can now deduce that the smaller ball which would be the golf ball has the larger surface area to volume ratio and it's just that simple in fact, this tendency um, for the surface area to volume ratio being inversely proportional to the radius or to the linear measurement uh, is the reason why if you chop your vegetables up really small, they will cook a lot quicker or in chemistry, chemical reactions go faster if the particle size is smaller because the surface area to volume ratio is much larger in very small things than they are in very large things. OK, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I'd, if you're taking your exams this year, I'd like to wish you all the best with your revision and all the best with your exams. And I'll look forward to seeing you in another video.